So hello and welcome to another edition of The Open Road, a podcast where we examine various aspects of open source and community community best practices. My name is Brian Proppet. I am with the Red Hat Open Source Program Office. And I'm Rich Bowen, also with the Red Hat Open Source Program Office. Right. And and as you've been watching these, we are currently delving into the world of foundations um, and, and their impact and uh, influence on a lot of free and open source software projects. Um, we've asked our guests uh, quite a few questions about, you know, what kind of foundation works best for which kind of project. But today we want to kind of do a hypothetical. And we asked each one of our guests the question, in your opinion, what would be the ideal uh, software foundation? So this was the question we put to our guests. I feel like we're going to get a lot of ideas. It depends. I feel like that might be the thing. <laughs> I, I feel like we had that the last time, but yeah, yeah. that's right. And it, it really does depend. And, and we have to kind of, as we kind of walk through this topic, th the idea here is that we're not trying to advocate one kind of foundation versus another or even a specific foundation over other foundations. What we're really trying to give uh, you listeners an idea here is what 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 is the breadth and the scope of software foundations that are out there? And, and as you can see, as we talk to our first guest, uh, Vicky Persur, who is a free and open source software consultant, um, there are a lot of different ways you can kind of approach the idea of what is an ideal foundation? There isn't one. I don't okay. think it's possible. Oh, we're done. Be. <laughs> uh, well, and again, I was thinking about this and it's in the context of the last question, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you have one project or one foundation that is trying to be all of those things, mm -hmm. that is trying to be uh, handle the money and the legal support and the infrastructure and the governance, okay, that's fine, but it's not going to be a good fit for all projects. So you can't service everyone. And if you can't help everyone, you're not ideal, right? And I don't think it's possible. And I frankly think it would be a mistake for foundations to try to become the one-stop shop where we can handle everyone. Because if, for instance, you're doing the money, legal support, infrastructure and governance, and you're focusing on these, you might be neglecting the people who just want the money and want you to handle the money for them. Um, the little guys, right, who don't need as much on uh, hands-on attention might fall by the wayside. And that might be okay, they might not want the attention, but I find typically they need a little more help um, and a little more guidance and they just might not realize it. So I, I think it's good that we don't have ideal foundations and I don't want us to have ideal foundations. I want us to have multiple different options that can really help to service the needs of different projects. Um, we have several foundations out there that are around, say, subject matters, like, um, it's gonna escape me and I didn't look it up, but there's one just for education open source projects. And there's one for medical open source mm -hmm. projects. And there's, and that can be really valuable when you've got somebody who knows your domain space and is able to make introductions to you. Uh, for different things. I think that's more of what I want, right? It's something that can better service the needs of open source projects okay. rather than yeah. the one-stop shop. So delving back into the distant past, there was a time, and it seems like it's not so long ago, but there was a time where there were and we talked about this uh, previously, but I think we were off camera when we were talking about it, how there were like four open source foundations and we had the problem solved, right? There's no need to create a new foundation because we have one already. And I had I attended um, conference presentations in the late 90s, early 2000s, where people would say, it's always a mistake to create a new foundation. We've already got one. 
and we're seeing this shift. I, I, I think I've come around completely. I, I completely agree with what Vicky's saying here, that having a foundation that understands your your industry space, your your project space, your topic gives you opportunities that you wouldn't have in a general purpose foundation. And, and I think that, you know, even within the general purpose foundations, so once again, I'll, most of my open source experience is, in with the, is within the Apache Software Foundation. Mm -hmm. And within there, you see pockets of domain specific projects. Uh, we, we've got a lot of projects around big data and they kind of stick together and they, they solve problems differently from other projects. And then we have projects around, um, uh, what, what's it called? Uh, like geospatial and, and meteorology, meteorological and scientific data sort of projects mm -hmm. that, that have their strong affinity with, with NASA and with the NSA and so forth. And they solve problems differently. And so even within a general purpose foundation, you end up with these sub foundations, you might say, and, and having having a, a topic knowledge is really important, both in making introductions, but just because you you look at the world differently. Sure, and 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 there are some and where it's happened organically within the Apache Software Foundation, it's happened on purpose in other foundations. Yeah. The Linux Foundation is certainly a, a a big example of that because they have. Uh, a lot of sub foundations, for lack of a better word. Um, I'm sure they'll send me an email and tell me the better word <laughs> later. Um, but but that's what they have. They have they have Finos. They have automotive. They have big data. You know they they built these up over time because they recognize that having that domain affinity, mm -hmm. so to speak, is a valuable uh, asset to all of the projects within those. Uh, sub foundations or buckets or whatever you want to yeah. call them, um, and and Vicky too. She alluded to uh, the previous episode where we were talking about you know why should the foundation you know why should a project join a foundation and you know she had talked about the services that foundations provided. Yeah. So even outside of domain space, which is certainly important. Um, the level uh, and type of services that a foundation provides um, is always going to be different for every project. So, you know, there isn't really going to be a one size fits all. So we we talked to um, Shane uh, Kukuru from also from the Apache Software Foundation, um, and we put the question to him, Shane, what is the ideal software foundation? Here's what he had to say. Um, it's it's not quite Apache. Apache would be close, but um, I don't think it's anybody really. Uh, I think that I thought about this earlier. The most important thing is a is an organization that is transparent, and not just transparent in terms of we we let people see our mailing list and so on. That's that certainly is a prerequisite, but really one that's transparent of what our goals are, how decisions are, decisions are made and one that takes the time and spends the energy to really explain that in a way that outsiders can understand, right? It, whether, you know, plenty of contributors to our projects are paid by big companies who have their own reasons for driving things. Plenty of our contributors are, are independent. There's a mix, but for all of them, ensuring there's, there's minimal friction for what, once they understand what they want to accomplish, if they can quickly understand where our direction goes, what kind of products we we ex how they ex we expect projects to work, um, that makes their decision to come to us and then to participate in our projects easier, right? So spending the time to explain, you know, here are our high 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 level goals. Um, here's how we go about things, and really taking the extra effort of not just writing that down on blog posts and the website, but whether it's you know hiring technical writers or um, spending the time to really get a bunch of different people in in questions like this in interviews like this to really explain it from different ways so that when somebody comes to us and says you know I'm curious about Apache they can find the right spot that quickly and in their words explains to them what we're really about 
And that's something I haven't seen anybody, you know, we all try in some ways, some projects or some foundations don't really try that much. Um, but really taking the time to make it very clear and, um, it, you know, some people don't want to promote yourself, but it's just being honest uh, and being honest in a way that's approachable. Um, that's the big question, right? Uh, the rest is all, um, the rest is all, you know, what, what does your foundation, what are your, what is your core governance community's goals for the future? And figuring out how to be efficient at making decisions around that, right? That's something we all do. Um, but that kind of depends on your goals, um, right? And I think there's another important thing about ideal foundation is I don't think there's just one. I think we really need the, the multiple foundations we have now. We could, we could probably use a couple more ones at scale that would were well governed, right? Not necessarily just fronts for corporations. Um, but we need different um, independent, not necessarily commercial spots where open source projects and communities can go grow, can go find their own way, which might not be, you know, the commercial thing or the thing that's going to drive investment today, but maybe in two years, maybe in five years does. Maybe it doesn't, but maybe it serves an important niche for science research um, or, you know, people running blog sites at home. Um, there's certainly plenty of ways we can have foundations that will help people create software um which is uh so i hope there are i hope there are a bunch of foundations and uh, i hope they keep going they'll keep going for a while so he shane had an interesting take at first um transparency um and really focused on that quite a bit when when we when we conducted that interview I, I have to admit I was a little bit surprised by the answer because I, you know, one of the things that foundations that I have had experience with is that they are very good at disseminating a message about what their organization does. But perhaps I was mistaken um, because Shane, you know, seems to have the impression, and, and I'm not saying he's right or wrong, that you know, explaining the mission is something that doesn't always get across. So the majority of my experience with foundations is Apache. And in the early days, long ago, everybody knew, everybody knew in big air quotes, what, what Apache was about. They knew what the mission was, knew why we were doing what we were doing. And then all of a sudden, we had a thousand members. And well, not quite, but we're getting there. And, and and everyone didn't know, or worse yet, everyone knew something different. And a, a few many times over the years, the question is is asked: what is the Apache way, the fabled Apache way? And you get 12 different answers. That are slight, that are subtly contradictory, and I, I think that maybe this is a hazard of trying to be a general purpose foundation because mm. there are so many different ways, and I would venture to say that they're all right for somebody, oh. um, and yet there are people who feel that their specific definition is right. So all of this, bringing all of this back to what Shane is saying. It's important to be able to clearly communicate, transparently communicate what your goals are, what a project has to expect when it comes to your foundation, and not have any surprises. But uh, culture culture doesn't scale, right? Culture culture is complicated. If if you ask the question, what is the culture of the United States of America? That is clearly an absurd question. But if you ask what is the culture of the of a software foundation, people expect that to be an answerable question. Right. Huge scale difference between those two things. But uh, but but I think that that's what's going on. That's good. So well, that's interesting. So it almost sounds like the, you know what you're talking about isn't necessarily transparency as much as transparency and continuity. Um, that there, there are so many different perceptions 
mm-hmm. of even a given foundation that it's important to kind of try to corral those a little bit and get them all in one place. Is, is that a fair assessment or? Yeah, I think so. Um, and and also, you know, maybe being transparent when there are areas of ambiguity and, mm-hmm. and saying, you know, this this particular point is open for for cultural interpretation. Um, while being clear about what are the immutable, what are the uh, the the uh, non negotiables, the the mm-hmm. things that are the pillars of our philosophy, and these other things are kind of up for interpretation by individual projects. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and it's funny because you, you, speaking of coming around, um, like and and we've talked about this in the past, where you know when I was you know, a young, uh, young, fresh reporter on the scene. Uh, and I've told you this, I didn't really care for the Apache way or the Apache software foundation, because in my mind at the time, it felt like it was a huge amount of overhead. Why were you making all these new young, innocent software projects <laughs> go through this incubator model. Why were you being so mean? Why were you laying down so many rules? Yeah. And and that was really what I thought. And and now, you know, and, and here's what was missing. It For me, what was missing for me was the why. Mm-hmm. Um, why did the Apache Foundation, uh, Software Foundation do this? Why did they continue to do this? Now, as I have matured, (laughs) I understand the why and it makes perfect Hmm. sense. It's not this bureaucracy. Yeah, that that's really insightful because coming back to what Shane is saying, Mm -hmm. I I don't know that that Apache does a great job of communicating the why. Mm -hmm. And and if understanding the why requires that you spend 20 years in the industry, that's not going to work for these young innocent software developers. Mm-hmm. Because they will they will see it as you saw it, and many many of them still do. Um, until we're able to communicate that why clearly, and I think that maybe that is part of what Shane is saying here with with the transparency of goals. Mm-hmm. Why do we have all of these rules? Where it's, it's because we want to achieve these goals. Yeah, and 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 the the good yeah, and and hopefully as you're right, I don't recommend going through twenty years of the technology industry. <laughs> You know, but that is certainly a way. But yeah, and 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 I'm not trying to pick on the Apache Foundation in any way, shape, or form. And and I even volunteer there now. So, but I think a lot of foundations could do, you know, learn from Shane's comments and talk about, you know, not just the benefits, but also the why mm-hmm. should people and projects participate in any given foundation. The next person that we talked to, as as in the previous episodes in this particular section, is Guy Martin, who is the executive director of the Oasis Foundation. And we asked him the same question, and here's what he had to say. Uh, I mean, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but kind of to reiterate, I think my vision for an ideal foundation is one that is supportive of of neutrality and is supportive of fairness and is not a pay to play uh, type of opportunity, but it's really allowing companies who want to support uh, something to, you know, pay into it to support the infrastructure, to support the governance, but that has this, what we call the bicameral, you know, governance model of, of like a, pro- a, a, a project governing board that, that deals with the strategy and the budgeting and kind of the overall direction of the project. And then a technical steering committee that, that deals with the day to day and, and kind of almost never the twain shall meet there, right? I mean, you, you want technical people actually doing the technical day to day decisions. And, and I think, you know, that to me is one of the things that I've liked. And it's, we're not the only foundation that does that, right? So there are several other folks that do that. But I think um, the goal there is really to provide the support. And it kind of goes to your previous question, Brian, about, you know, what's the, you know, are you driving a vision or are you supporting a vision? And I think supporting the vision, but finding those adjacent pieces is really, really important. And, you know, as a foundation, it's kind of our job to be the place that that people come and trust. 
right? That especially people who may not be participating in the pro in, in a project or a standard right away, but maybe want to use it or, you know, feel like there is, or, or, you know, consume it, feel like there is, um, good governance and good processes and and really uh, fair assessment uh, and fair you know use of those processes so guy is focusing on neutrality um and governance which i like that i mean i gotta admit that one appeals to me um not more than the other answers but definitely that's something that's high on my list of things to appreciate about a given foundation. And, and, and to kind of outline a little bit, when, when Guy refers to pay to play, um, he is, you know, probably, and I think we can go here, is referring to 503C6 foundations that are more like trade organizations. Um, that's a code in the United States. We're going to have another episode on those uh, later in this series. Um, but, you know, where organizations come together around a collective technology or a mission, and there is usually sponsorship involved. So it, it's, it's not completely derisive, but it kind of is. And that when you call it the pay to play, um, it's not meant to be derisive. I know a lot of people throw that around um, and as a, as an insult. Um, and it's not always the case, but that's what he means. So Oasis is a C6 mm -hmm. and um, it, you, you do pay for membership. But the thing that he's emphasizing here is, is the separation between foundation level membership and governance mm -hmm. from the technical steering. And I, I feel like that's really, that that's really critical. And you, you see a lot of younger projects or, or maybe projects that never had to, to evolve to this point where the technical steering and the project governance are the same group of people. Right. And eventually that causes difficulties because mm -hmm. there's, there's this, this conflict of interests between, and not, not necessarily in a, in a legal sense, but there's this conflict between, I want this feature and we need to file our taxes or whatever, and and, and having those to be separate separate groups of people, um, the, what what he calls bicameral mm -hmm. uh, leadership, is is one of the things that I consider really important, um, yeah. either at a foundation or or even just at the project level if you're not part of a foundation. Right. Exactly. So, you know, getting into there. We could spend, and probably will later, uh, a whole episode on governance of a project. But the governance also applies to the foundations too, and and smaller foundations probably have a, a more, I'm sorry, a less formal form of governance, where as you describe, the technical steering committee and the board of the foundation are almost the same body, if not the same body. And, and as projects mature, mature, so too do foundations. And you can move to that and should move uh, to that split um, uh, split uh, body, so to speak, where you have the technical stuff being managed by a neutral, neutral uh, board or whatever council. Um, yeah, so it's interesting that neutrality for a guy is the you know, the top thing and coming from somebody who, you know, Oasis sort of standards based, mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense. But, you know, for me, I think it should apply to all of them. Um, and, and for the most part, it does, there are some exceptions. Um, but I think that's a worthy goal for every foundation to have that neutrality. That's what everybody always clamors for. Like give your project to this, you know, foundation and you'll have sustainability because everybody's a neutral party and it, it'll never die. Well, that's not exactly true, but right. one company won't kill it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, it's, it's naive to say that open source isn't influenced by particular corporate players or even that particular corporate players don't have an overwhelming influence in some projects, but it's, it's something that, 
you know, goes along with that transparency that this is something we're striving to. And, and we acknowledge that project whatever is overwhelmingly run by this corp, mm-hmm. but, but putting governance in place such that there is a, there is a level playing field. And even those who aren't sponsoring the foundation have a, a the same volume of voice, you might say, in debate and discussion and decisions is, I, I think that all three of our of our guests um, alluded to that, and to me, that's one of the most important things in a in in a foundation and in an open source project is that that level playing field. The idea that a, a nights and weekends hobby developer has just as loud a voice as the person that's working forty hours a week for a big company is so critical to me and, and and one of the central components of what makes open source in my mind. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely. And 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 that is a good way for foundations. You know, our guests really didn't ever nail down an ideal foundation, but that trait amongst all of them would certainly be an ideal trait for them to share. And and I think that we have um, a different answer than we would have had if we'd asked this question 10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, Pretty much all of our guests said at some level, in some point in this conversation, it's good that there are dozens and dozens and dozens of foundations because they solve subtly different problems and they're able to solve them in in ways specific to the problem. And... uh, I think that that's that's a real it's a real shift in the way that we think about foundations over the last decade. Yeah, agreed. Well, I think we've come to the end of another episode of the Open Road, um, where we kind of looked at trying to figure out more about foundations. We're going to be continuing our series on foundations in in the weeks ahead, and we welcome your uh, participation in our video cast. So, with that. My name is Brian Prophet. And I'm Rich Bowen. And thank you for joining us and have a safe and productive day.